more than 25 years ago, I started my journey in photography because I wanted to do astrophotography. And when I went to the dealer, you know, I was actually kind of set on buying a Nikon camera. But Bob Novosel and all of his wisdom, even though he was a staunch digital advocate back then, and I think, I think back then digital cameras were only about 3 megapixels still, he took this OM-1 and he set it on the countertop and he said, this is what you need to do astrophotography. This was 175 bucks. And here I am today opening a brand new Olympus OM-1. I've come full circle. Now, if you're wondering, when did I order mine and how long did it take to get here? Because these things have just sold like crazy. I ordered mine 48 hours after they released it. Okay, 48 hours. And it is now one month and one week since I ordered it. Every box I've ordered from Olympus has come to me and when I received it, I've been like, that feels a lot lighter than I expected it to be. Now this time, a little different, but you know, yeah, it's a little bit heavier than I thought it would be, but I also got the extra battery and also the battery grip. I'm not sure if those came this time. We'll see here in a second. And nope, we didn't get the battery grip yet. It looks like we have only received the camera. Here it is. I'm a little disappointed the battery grip didn't come, honestly. That's okay. So here we go, Olympus packaging. So you know me, in my videos, I like to point out stuff that nobody else has pointed out yet. So when we open this thing, first thing I noticed when I saw other people doing it, is the inside of the box. It's not printed, okay? Every camera, every pro camera that I've ever purchased from Olympus, like here's my, this is my E1X, EM1X. Yeah. It's black on the inside, okay? Now, lenses weren't quite like that. This is the Pro, this is the 45 lens. This, as you can see, was carbon on the inside. And this right here, this is my original E1 box. And as you can see, oh yeah, this one has cardboard on the inside. So, it's not a problem for me. Okay, actually, I'm glad that they've gone to a cheaper type of cardboard because the, bo the box has nothing to do with the quality of the camera, folks. Really, nothing. Everybody tries to copy Apple, and I think to an extreme that you really, it's, it's a waste of time and money. I, I would much prefer that they put their money into R&D. So, we have a USB-C to USB-C cable, which I think is a good thing. Some people complain that it's not a USB-A at one end. However, everything, folks, is going USB-C. And we have the warranty card, okay. This is the manual in 20 languages. It probably will only have about 10 pages of actual stuff in it. We'll see here. And ah, here it is. The day I've waited for for 25 years, I guess, a digital only one. So. <laughs> oh, it's nice. That's so nice. Okay. All right, let's see what else is in here. Good, you know, I really want to get back to that. Um, no oh boy, ah, lens cleaning cloth. And this is the little flash. I think I have two of these now. One came with my EM1 Mark II. I didn't get one with the EM1 Mark III, I don't think. Maybe I have to check the box. And here's the battery. And this is the charging block. And then of course we have the camera strap. Oh yes, and most importantly, uh, for me at least, astrophotography wise, there's these two little clips. Okay, so this one goes on the the shoulder strap and then you, you hook your cables through it. And this one here goes into the USB and HDMI port. And what these do is they protect the cables from getting smashed and broken off, which with the HDMI being a micro HDMI, you definitely want this, especially if you're a video guy or you do astrophotography. So let's get into the next section of the video. If you've watched my channel enough, you know that I am an EM1X fan fanboy, I don't know, I hope Olympus makes an OM-1X. Oh, this would be so cool. Let's get this off here. So I now have the complete trinity of the Pro F1.2 lenses, which is great for video and of course astrophotography because they're fast lenses. 
So let's get, we're going to get two of these on here. That way they're the exact same lens. They balance the exact same way and everything else. And we'll get rid of the lens shades though. All right. So what we're now going to do is we're going to do a blindfolded ergonomics test. I want to kind of tell you what I think of the new camera compared to, if I can tie this, compared to the EM1X, because I think that the EM1X is the finest camera that I have ever touched. So let's, let's kind of do a side by side here. Now, so this is, this is the only one I've barely seen this thing or touched it. I gotta say that, that grip does feel really good. Well, let me compare it to the, OM, the EM1. Yeah, man, I gotta say, this is, this is better. It's just like, it, it feels like it's sculpted for my hand. It's a little bit smaller than the EM1X. The EM1X is definitely bigger. Now, the EM1X, of course, it's got the battery grip built into it, so I've got like more palm support here, which is nice. But the way my thumb kind of like locks into this portion right here, that feels very good. Now, the shutter button, my finger's kind of overshooting it a little bit. Let me see what the E1X is like. Yeah, see the E1X, my finger falls right on that shutter button. And I bet this will change a little bit though when I get the battery grip, because the battery will probably allow me to get my hand a little bit lower. You know, although that's fine. It's like I can use the ball of my finger to basically hit the shutter. So, all right, now let's look. The next thing I wanna do, I noticed that this guy was mounted a little bit higher than the EM1 Mark III. And, and also, let me see here, I'm gonna flip the mirror around. I know the E1X, man, it's, it's, it's in a good spot because and that's because your hand is, is lower on the camera with the battery grip and everything. I can basically kind of sink it right into this portion, the pad of my thumb before it hits the joint. Now, with the OM1 here, let's, let's see if I can find it first. Okay, it's right there. It doesn't feel as definite. It's, it's definitely a lower profile, but I would say, yeah, it definitely feels like it's higher up. It, it, it's in the right spot, let's put it that way, okay? Now, another new button here is the back focus button, which, of course, the EM1X doesn't even have that. I gotta, what is falling on my face here? String <laughs> from my rather old handkerchief here. Ah, uh, now let's, let's do the dials, okay? The command dials. So, boy, that command, that rear command dial is quite a bit smaller compared to the E1X. So the E1X, EM1X, I really wish, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad they're shortening the names. Yeah, see that, that rear command dial is so much easier to grab than this guy. Actually, I can't even, there it is right there. It, it's not quite as grippy either, cause it's, uh, let's see here. It's plastic, the EM1X is rubber. Now the front one, the front one's fine. Okay, that's, and actually you could use your middle finger if you wanted to, but I probably will use my, my index finger. Now let's see, compared to the EM1X. Yeah, I still kind of get to give the EM1X a, a, a upper hand here. You know, cause the EM1X, it's got these big fat rubber dials and they just, they just meld into your finger really well. And, and they have a lot of tr surface travel because they're like a bigger diameter. So like you can, you can go more, more steps, but you know, you just, it's, it's more tactile. Let's put it that way. Okay. So here's, here's another important thing to me. And that's the, I don't know you call this the command dial for navigating the interface. So let's see here. It feels pretty low profile. Let me feel the, EM1 Mark, EM1X. See now, the EM1X and the EM1 Mark III had a very similar feeling command dial for the interface. And see, see these ones here, I can really feel each individual part of the four four prong pad. Um, 
This guy right here, is, it's a little bit harder to feel each of them, you know, because they, they lay more flush for sure, okay? Now, okay, the delete button is very easy to find. Now, this is something I noticed when I was looking at the pictures of this thing, is that, and, and this is a good thing, is that it seems like, so let's feel all the other buttons. See, with the E1X, okay, they made each button like a different size and a different kind of feel, different textures and so forth, and that's what makes finding those buttons in the dark very easy. This guy here, all the buttons are kind of the same, which allows you to make them smaller, but the cool thing is, is that they've made these, they've used the negative space of the body around the button. So like the, de the delete button is very easy to find. Now, uh, the other two are quite a bit harder to find, these two out here. But of course the top two up here, these, those are really easy to find. And, and you can definitely tell just by the way they're sitting on, on these radiuses here that which one is which. The menu button, I really like this, okay? So the menu button on the E1 Mark III was very hard to find in the dark. The E1X is really easy to find because it's a big button. But um, uh, this guy right here, there's actually like a little, like a, a rim that goes around the button. It makes it very easy for me to distinguish it from the viewfinder button that's right here next to it. Okay, so that that I definitely like. Now, now let's feel the top ones. Okay, so and the EM1 Mark III is such a different beast though because it's got three. So the EM1 Mark III definitely they're harder to find. Okay, but you have three of them. This guy here, I don't, I gotta disagree. What's that, guy, that guy's name? Uh, Chris, I think. I think they're easier, they're easier to find. It feels better to me. I like this depression like because I can basically push this direction. I know I'm hitting that one. I can't accidentally hit the other one. Or I can press backwards and I know for sure that I'm hitting the rear button. So I think that's about, let's, well, we gotta rotate this. Let's see how that feels. So this has got like a stiffer kind of feel to it, but this guy, it feels like a lighter button, but I would say the clicks themselves are more definite. I wonder if it'll wear in a little bit. Well, we shall see. Uh, let's flip the screen out. I noticed that the screen hinge on this thing is thinner than the EM1 Mark III in the photos. Let's see here. Definitely feels nice and sturdy, that's for sure. Yeah, there's less, let's, let's see the play on the EM1X. Okay, the, the, I like the new hinge. The new hinge is definitely improvement. It's nice, there's no play in it whatsoever, which which that right there is an engineering model. I gotta, gotta hand it to their engineers. They did a good job on this guy. I'm trying to think, was there anything else I wanna blind test here? Somebody raise their hand. No. Okay. <laughs> so there, you've probably never seen that before, right? You know, I know I'd never seen that before. I was blindfolded the whole time. Ah, <sighs> uh, but yeah, oh, you know what? I never tested the AEL button here. So, okay, let's, let's do this again. <laughs> All right, so, so yeah, I, I missed the AL button. I kind of forgot that that is up there because I was so enamored with the, the new autofocus back there button. So I really like this option dial here on the EM1X. It's, it's got a nice tall feel to it. This guy here, where is he? He's right there, okay. Okay, he's, he actually is just as easy to flip. You know, there's, there's it's like a sharper ridge to it, it feels like. But he, he's definitely smaller, which is fine because you know this is a smaller camera. The center button, let's see what the center button is like pressing. The E1 actually definitely sits up higher. It's, it's a little bit easier to press, but I'll tell you what, this one right here, it, it's harder for me to feel that I'm pressing the button. I don't feel as much of a depression. This guy right here, when I, when I feel that, that button press, there's more of a click to it and it's deeper. So. Overall, I think like I mixed about, yeah, everything about it is good. Okay, there's, there's nothing here there I can say I can complain about. So, I never really touched the, these two haven't really changed, these two buttons in the front. 
But let's look at it again. I got let my eyes adjust here. I've been blindfolded for a little while. Okay, something else that I noticed, and I'm, I'm seeing this as, now that I can see it here. So, the EM1 Mark III, the EM1 Mark II, the EM1X, this section of the camera has always been either plastic because of the door that's there, or it's, and, the, and the EM1X's case, it's, I think it is magnesium. No, wait, the door itself is plastic, but there's a lot more magnesium here. It's more slippery, okay? Even though this guy's got a much bigger grip and I've, I can use all four of my fingers to grab it, it's kind of slippery right here, my thumb. Because who cares if your other four fingers can hold on to it if your thumb cannot? This guy here, I think this is why immediately it felt so much better in my hands. It's because all of this door, okay, the entire door, it's got rubber padding on it. Now, I'm curious to see how this wears, because this is like a, this is a high impact spot. This gets a ton of hours of use, you know, if you're using the camera. But yeah, that, that right there is probably why this, this feels so much better. You know, so kudos to the engineers once again for, for that little, that little trick that they put in there. So let's see here, let's, let's look at this guy right here. Looks similar, it's a bigger, right? Yeah, it's a bigger opening to this guy because I use the intervalometer, intervalometer port quite a bit. Ah, there we go. Okay, now it's time to go charge this baby and get her going so that I can actually use the thing. Because I know they, they ship the batteries dead now, which I believe has something to do with like shipping or export laws. That's that's why that's something new. All of your previous cameras that I've ever bought from Olympus, they always kind of came half charged. So yeah, I'm super excited folks. I can't wait to like, you know, do a ton more testing and just go scientific bejesus on this thing. Cause you know, astrophotography, science, that's what we're all about here. So uh, have a good one folks and can't wait to see you in the next one. Don't worry, honey, I have not forgotten about you.